Okay, fellow babies, welcome back to Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. Uh, I'm your host and the only uh, participant, Michael Pactor. Um, <clears throat> we're going to take some questions today, uh, take a question today, and uh, we're going to keep doing this for a while. So keep them coming in. You can uh, submit them on Twitter to me at Michael Pactor, or you can submit them to at Sifted games and we're on sifted.net if you're watching on sifted.net because you're a patreon patron thank you so much for your patronage if you're watching on twitch as a twitch prime member that's free and you're getting it on time if you're watching it um, on youtube a week late then that's because you're not paying anything but obviously you can subscribe on youtube you can subscribe through patreon or you can pay nothing and link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch Prime account. So try to do one of those things if you can afford it or if your Prime member is free. Um, and you'll get this content pretty pretty soon thereafter. From Sifted from Cinetic. What's your take on Sony buying Budgie? Is it worth the price? We've seen so many free-to-play or live service games fail because players tend to pick one and stick with it. Sony says a big reason for the acquisition is Bungie's expertise in this area, and it wants to have 10 new live services games in the next four years. Are there even enough players to support them all? Uh, how is it going to make 10 live service games profitable and recoup the investment? Look, I, I'm on record as saying Sony vastly overpaid for Bungie. Um, I know the Bungie guys. I like the Bungie guys. Uh, the going rate in development is between 250,000 and a million per developer. Um, go look up Insomniac. I think the rumor was $220 million, 220 developers, million a developer. And that's a company that worked closely with Sony, made Sony exclusive IP. You know, they made a couple of Spider-Man games. They made uh, Ratchet and Clank. But, but Insomniac has made a ton of Sony exclusives. Uh, million of developers on the high end, but but again, the devil you know, they're great, and, and Sony was willing to pay that. And here they come along and they buy Bungie, who shocked me, they have 900 employees, and they paid 3.6 billion, 4 million per developer. Now, I get that you would buy somebody who's got great IP, so like buying Bethesda, Microsoft paid a lot more, you know, 4 million per developer. But Bethesda has about a dozen big name IPs. You know, we've gone through this: um, Doom and, and Quake and Fallout and Dishonored and uh, on and on. Elder Scrolls. I mean, you keep going. Bungie created Halo, doesn't own it. Created Destiny, and they do own it. So, as far as I know, Bungie has been around for about 25 years. Um, so, you know, because the original Halo came out in 2001. So let's go with, they were formed in 1997. Um, since 1997, I believe they've made three Halos. I could be wrong, they might've made four, but I think they made three. And they made two Destinies. So five games in 25 years, you know, and if I'm wrong, it's six. So they're good for a game every four to five years. That is not a lot of IP that you're buying. Now, I, I heard through a pretty reliable source that they had four or five games in development. I totally believe it. But how many are coming out? Because only five have come out in the last 25 years. So I think Sony really overpaid. Halo is a phenomenal success. Was a great franchise and props to Pete Parsons and former Bungie CEO Harold Ryan for coming up with something amazing and creating it and seeing it through. Um, Destiny, really good, but not as good as Halo, and certainly never the following. Um, you know, you take a Destiny game, which is kind of a, I mean, the, the core game isn't that big a deal. It's really the multiplayer live services part of the game, and it's fun. And you get Vince Ampella with Apex Legends, you know, passing Destiny like it was standing still. Um, Apex, I think Microsoft, I'm sorry, EA just said is is going to do nearly a billion dollars this fiscal year. Last year it was nearly 700 million. So, you know, a couple of years prior was between three and 400 million. So it's gone from 350 to 650 to a billion in in three short years. Um, Destiny, no chance, not even close to that in live services. And if you look back at the Respawn acquisition, 450 million. 
You know, that was 450 million when Respawn was working on Apex. EA knew about it, we didn't. It hadn't been announced yet. But they had made Titanfall, and they had made Titanfall 1 and 2, and Vince, as a, as a producer, had made a Call of Duty game every two years, and a Medal of Honor before that, from 1998 through 2011. You know, so much more productive, uh, fewer employees, but 450 million, and Bungie going for, you know, nine times that. That's crazy. Yes, I think they overpaid. Now again, in fairness, I don't know what else Bungie's got working. So if Bungie has a game plan that says, yeah, we have a new game that craps all over Apex and is going to do one and a half billion, then maybe they are worth it. But like I said, if you could have respawn, if you could have eight respawns for the same price as Bungie, I'd rather have respawn. Uh, I'd rather have eight of them. Um, now, rest of your questions, uh, I'm not so sure you're right about free to play or live service games fail because players pick one and stick with it. Um, I don't think you can name a game that has more than 200 million active players. I don't think that game exists. I'd say that's probably Candy Crush, pretty close. Um, and there are three and a half billion active mobile gamers, monthly actors, three and a half billion. Um, I think you can take games like League of Legends, I think maybe peaked out at around 75 million, 100 million in there. Fortnite, 75 million, 100 million. Uh, there's plenty of room for other games to get 100 million players. So, you know, your question, is Sony going to do 10 of them and they all be profitable? You make money at about 20 million users. And out of three and a half billion, there's plenty of room. I mean, the top 100 probably all have about 20 million users. So there's room for 100. Um, what are the odds that Sony gets it right? Low, but not because Sony sucks, but because it's really hard to make games. Um, Sony is actually probably better at it as an enterprise than anybody. They probably had more hits first party than anybody. So I'm not going to diss Sony ability to make great games, but live services is a new thing. The Bungie guys know how to do it for sure. Um, I don't know why you pay three and a half billion, three point six billion. Um, my my guess is because that's what Bungie asked for, and Sony just choked and did it. Um, if you want to look at some other brilliant Sony acquisitions, they bought Gaikai for over four hundred million. Whatever happened to that? You know, they bought on live for undisclosed price, but I heard a couple hundred million. Whatever happened to that? Oh, or that's PlayStation Now. It is PlayStation Now, but it's like off the shelf technology. Google has it. You know, Amazon has it. Microsoft has it. You could have had them power your technology. You don't need to buy the, those other guys. Um, so I'm not so sure Sony's very smart in making acquisitions in general, except when they buy first party studios like Naughty Dog and like. Uh, they bought the guys up in uh, Seattle that, that did Ghost of Tsushima too, didn't they? They did. Sucker punch. Yeah, they bought those guys too, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Sony's really good at buying first party studios because I think that, yeah, and they bought Herman Hulse Studio, uh, the guys who made Horizon. Um, yeah, and I think Sony's MO in the past has been hire a studio, have them do first party content, see how they do, and after one or two iterations, buy the studio. So Guerrilla Games was independent until Sony bought them. Sucker Punch independent until Sony bought them. Naughty Dog independent until Sony bought them. Media Molecule independent until Sony bought them. So the, the Sony MO has always been work closely with somebody, pay them a lot, let them make us a first party exclusive or two. And after a couple, then you get really comfortable with them and then you buy them. That's a really smart model. And I don't think any of those, it was even close to a billion. I think they were all probably 200 million, 300 million. So Bungie cost them probably the sum of what they paid for Gorilla, Media Molecule, Sucker Punch, Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Sony Santa Monica. I, to think about. I would be willing to bet that those six, and I probably left out one or two, add up to half of what they paid for Bungie. So when you ask if I think they ever paid, because of moves like this, the price of, of 
buying developers is going up and there's no way you could buy respawn for 450 million now but the truth is yes they overpaid um, and they're actually accelerating their demise by spending money foolishly on a, a one product company and again Bungie may have five games in development that we don't know about so maybe in the next you know 10 years we'll see two of them and in the next 20 years we'll see all five maybe but it's that's a long payoff so we'll see i i'm you can bookmark this one and come back to me in 10 years and say you were wrong Bungie had you know the next apex legends and by the way three and a half billion 3.6 billion if you get a game that generates a billion a year probably worth it like it's worth 3.6 to get a billion a year so if i'm wrong and then you know destiny no chance is a billion a year no chance but if Bungie comes up with two or three other things and they add up to a billion a year, then it maybe it'll be worth it. So let's see. Let's hope. I got to say, Pete is really good. His team is really good. Um, Harold's at probably Monsters. I think they're going to shock people because Harold's really good too. Um, and again, Halo is such a great franchise. 343 made a good one, you know, without anybody from Bungie. So. Um, they created something that's lasting and someone else took over and it's great. Um, you can't, you can't put a price on creative talent. So Sony put a price and threw a big number out there. My guess is that Bungie wasn't really for sale. And so they threw out a ridiculous number and they got it. Um, thanks for joining us on Factor Factor. I gave you a long answer. Uh, I hope to see you next time, but, but between now and the next Factor Factor, sign up, you know, on uh, Patreon as a patron or link your Twitch Prime account to your Amazon Prime account, please, that's free, or subscribe to us on YouTube, or none of the above, get this stuff a week late. Follow me on Twitter, at Michael Pactor. I'll see you next time.